Our next marking that we need to put on the chair itself is the marking of the lumbar zone. And as section six, or as figure 16 from the definition section shows us, the lumbar zone is between 160 and 270 millimeters off the bottom of the chair measuring device. And we'll talk more about how this device works, but for the, for the moment, let's just push the 270 marker back here. And that allows me then uh, to come into this piece of tape right here and put a mark on it, showing a dimension or a uh, position that we're going to need to use again later, uh, where the 270 is. The 160 is so far down buried in here that we can't utilize that particular uh, element. We'll, we'll make up for that later on when the chair measuring device is out of the chair. We'll simply use a, a simple tape measure to get the other end of that. But for the, first, for the moment, we'll just put that mark right in here. And we've got now all the markings that we can do for the moment done. Uh, now that we're proceeding to the very first step of the lumbar measurement. And the lumbar measurement calls for us to get the absolutely the maximum thrust forward of the lumbar support as possible. So you can play with the location of the of the support device up and down and in and out uh, to, to do that. So I've got this now set up in such a way that I think is going to get us the maximum protrusion. And I'll just show you how that protrusion is coming forward when I rotate this back and forth. That's with it back. This is with it forward. So now we think we've found the right spot in which to make our measurements. We've placed all the marks where we're supposed to place them and so on. It would probably be wise to now um, start the first measurement. And that is in the measuring the lumbar characteristics. And it might be helpful to spend just a second or two talking about how this system works. The, the lumbar measuring uh, device works on the basis of having some cylinders drive these little segments back uh, under a pressure of uh, three and a half newtons for each one. And we find that we know that those three and a half newtons are achieved when we apply a pressure in the cylinder of 1.2 atmospheres. So in a few seconds I'll start to pump these up and uh, the very first thing I'll need to do of course is now put the switch on the um, pressure control device in, in the position that will capture and hold the pressure as I pump it up. So that will start in. So we made a few of the segments start to move. As Dave goes in with your uh, camera, you can see the pressure is going up on that uh, gauge. We're getting close to the required pressure. And now we're about 1.2 atmospheres. And with that, that we can see a pattern on this, these segments showing that there's a protrusion of the lumbar that sticks forward most right in this region here. And that probably starts in at about 220, uh, 220 millimeters above the bottom of the chair measuring device, and probably tops out about 250. So um, we can now record that and say that the maximum protrusion occurs between those two points, and the amount of protrusion we read off this scale here. And you probably can't see it very well, but I can tell you that that's probably about 31 millimeters off of the zero line if this were a straight back chair over here. Okay, I'm just going to show you the, the next few steps for this one time. Now we're going to release the pressure by throwing the switch over here. And we're going to move the segments back. You can see they started back on their own. But you have to take your hand and push all those segments back into the right position. I call it the park position. You pretty much have to do it one at a time. Not the easiest of steps, but this is the way that makes it correct. Okay, our next step is to 
uh, required in the standard is B, which is to measure the least lumbar that you can be made. And we probably we want to do this at exactly the same height as it was before. So we're measuring on an absolute basis how little or how much lumbar there is in, in one step and how little there can be for those who prefer low or little lumbar. So I uh, just wanted to show that we're going to do that now. And we've had it in the maximum position, as you may recall, right in here. And now I'm just going to crank that back to minimize the amount of lumbar. Now we've, we've pumped up the, uh, the pressure so that the segments are, have moved in. And we've got a, a, a modest shift in the amount of lumbar going on here. It starts at about on the 230 level now and runs up to 260. And the amount of lumbar protrusion here is probably in the 20. Six or seven range instead of 31. Okay, our next steps, having done the measurement of how much protrusion that the lumbar device uh, pushes into your back, is now steps C, uh, C and D to measure how, how we can vary the height of that protrusion. So, uh, this particular chair has the ability to make that adjustment, which we'll do in a little bit. But well, the first step is we'll try to um, set the uh, protrusion at its maximum, that is out this way, uh, so we can most readily see how the height is varying. So I've done that, and off camera I will make the various adjustments to the uh, height of the lumbar position this way. And uh, that will allow us then to record steps C and D.